Uh, welcome to first course on Power Systems, uh, Module 5. And in this module, we'll look at uh, transformer, transformers in power systems. And uh, just like our previous modules, uh, this module is also very tightly connected to this reference textbook here. So in this uh, module, we are looking at Chapter 6 of this textbook. And uh, we'll introduce uh, this subject, why do we need transformers? What are the basic principles of operation? Uh, we will come up with a simplified uh, transformer model and then represent it in per unit because quite often uh, these transformers for studies purposes are represented on per unit. Then we will talk about their efficiencies and reactances and so forth, regulation in these transformers. And then we will also look at auto transformers because quite often they are used in power systems and also how we can introduce phase shift by these transformers. And then uh, we have very often three winding transformers and also three phase transformers. So we'll look at those and also look at how we can represent these uh, transformers with uh, taps and so forth. So that's the, the topic for us today. <clears throat> so first of all, let's look at why we need transformers. Uh, transformers are a very essential apparatus in power systems. If you consider that uh, the voltages that, that are produced by generators, they are around 20 kV level at three phase. And uh, if you look at residential load, that residential load is uh, like 110 to 220 to 240 volts single phase. So by the time power comes from these generators to this load, it has gone through approximately five transformations. So uh, it's no surprise that uh, the installed capacity of these transformers is five times that of generators because, you know, first we have a 20 kV level generation, which is then stepped up because that's a fairly low, very low voltage for, for high power transmission. And then the transmission line voltages could be anywhere from 230 to 765 kV, and then you have sub-transmission and distribution system, and then finally this residential uh, uh, output, which is at 120 to 240 volts. And the other reason for using uh, transformers is for safety, uh, electrical isolation. <clears throat> so let's uh, get into it, and uh, let's look at the principle on which uh, these transformers work. So the first thing we have to do is to generate flux. So just to explain this principle, think of a toroid where you have a coil with, uh, we also call winding. We have winding with N1, number of turns, and we are applying this voltage E1 here. Okay. So by Faraday's law that we saw in module 1, this uh, voltage is induced. E1 is equal to N1 d phi dt. Our you know, if you're applying voltage, then the flux is produced, okay? Uh, and uh, the time rate of change of flux is given by Faraday's law, but we can write this equation in an integral form where I'm assuming at time t equal to zero, uh, the flux is zero. But uh, that'll be the equation that we have. So what, what it is showing is that the flux in this core is entirely dependent upon the voltage and its integral. It doesn't depend upon anything else. <clears throat> All right. So uh, before we go further, let's look at, uh, you know, to support this flux, there'll be uh, magnetizing currents. And uh, so we look at the core of this uh, transformer. And usually it's made up of uh, ferromagnetic materials, such as uh, silicon steel. And uh, <clears throat> if you look at the BH characteristic of materials of this type, we commonly see these uh, uh, hysteresis loops here, where if you slowly increase the, uh, the magnetic field intensity, uh, the flux density would increase, and then if you decrease it, the flux density would decrease. So you trace a loop, and uh, the area within this loop represents the energy that is lost. So that is the hysteresis loss, okay? And uh, if you join the tips, so the, this is a nonlinear, multi-valued characteristic that we see here on the left. But to simply represent it, if we join the tips 
of all these uh, uh, minor hysteresis loops, we come up with this characteristic over here, and which shows that uh, beyond this knee, uh, you ha before this knee rather, you have a very high uh, permeability. This could be, you know, a, a, ten, a thousand or more. But uh, once you approach that knee, uh, then uh, this uh, characteristic begins to saturate, and uh, then the incremental permeability in the saturated region is the same as that of air, very low. Okay, so you know, generally we we do not want this transformer to go into saturation because uh, you know our idea is to produce this flux by as few ampere turns as possible. <clears throat> and uh, this knee uh, is such that uh, these transformers using uh, silicon steel they operate at 1.6 to 1.8 tesla, something like that. All right. So next, let's uh, look at, uh, you know, the magnetizing current. So once again, we have uh, uh, this winding with uh, N1 number of turns, and uh, this characteristic of the core B and H over here, and you can see that uh, B is proportional to uh, flux if you multiply this by area, and if you multiply this by number of turns, then we have the flux linkage. Uh, lambda sub m. Similarly, from Ampere's law, this H sub m is proportional to I sub m. Okay, so the ratio of this uh, flux linkage to this current is the magnetizing inductance L sub m. So if you're operating in the linear region of this core, then we can represent this winding by an inductance of this uh, value L sub m, and uh, the current drawn to support this flux would be I sub M. So that's, uh, uh, that's the equivalent circuit of uh, uh, the circuit that we have here on the left side here. <clears throat> and if you look at this magnetizing flux under sinusoidal steady state conditions, uh, we are applying, let's say, this voltage, E1, to this uh, coil. And uh, then uh, the flux uh, we saw earlier is given by the integral of this applied voltage divided by the number of turns, and if you, you know, choose the time origin right, then the flux can be written in terms of a peak value here uh, times sine omega t, where the applied voltage is cosine omega t, and the peak value in terms of the RMS voltage is square root of 2 times E1. So in between, we have omega. This 2 pi f is uh, omega, right? So we can see that uh, this voltage is related to uh, this flux by uh, omega N1. So this peak flux value is equal to the applied voltage uh, in terms of RMS divided by 4.44 N1 times F, okay, given by this equation. <clears throat> so it clearly shows that if you exceed the rated voltage for which uh, it is this system is designed will cause the flux to go beyond some uh, rated uh, flux value, and uh, this uh, whole thing will saturate. That means uh, you know for uh, you will need a lot more ampere turns, a lot of current to increase the flux beyond a certain level. Okay, so that's a counterproductive thing. And in modern power transformers, magnetizing current is less than a point. 2% of its rated value. So it's a very small current that is needed, or ampere turns that are needed to establish this flux. So now let's look at uh, uh, the main function of this uh, trans uh, arrangement, uh, which is voltage transformation. So what we'll do, we already had this coil N1 here. <clears throat> let's put another coil here uh, with N2 number of turns, second winding here and the voltage is defined here as E2. <clears throat> and for the time being, we will assume that all the flux produced by the first winding is confined to this core and uh, links the second winding. So this is, this is the only flux phi sub m that is being produced, and we are neglecting the leakage flux, which uh, doesn't link the second winding, and we also, uh, for the moment, neglecting the, the resistances of this winding. So 
Uh, from Faraday's law, we know that uh, E1 is N1 D phi DT. Similarly, the same flux is linking the second coil, so E2 is N2 D phi DT. And uh, <clears throat> so from these two equations, uh, both voltages are related to the same D phi DT. So E1 over N1 is N2 over N N2. So E1 over N1 is equal to E2 over N2. Uh, what that means is that volts, volts per turn are the same on both sides. So that's the thing to remember, that volts per turn are the same, okay? And uh, we can also write that uh, E1 and E2, they're related by this N1 over N2 in this form on a time uh, basis uh, as a function of time. And if these voltages are varying sinusoidally, then we can represent them by phasors. So E1 phasor over E2 phasor, uh, they are related by N1 over N2. So that's the transformer function. And uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, uh, first winding which we had shown by this uh, magnetizing inductance Lm, uh, we can add uh, this uh, transformation function by this ideal transformer over here, okay, with uh, turns N1 and N2. And uh, please note that, you know, uh, in, on the left, uh, we had drawn uh, these two windings very carefully. But uh, we don't have to do that, provided we use these dots properly. So when uh, this, uh, at the dotted terminal, it's positive. On the left side, it will also be, the voltage will be positive at the dotted terminal with respect to the undotted terminal on the secondary side here. Okay, so that's the function of these dots here. <clears throat> now, uh, we go one step further because previously we had E2 open, right? And uh, in, I'm, I'm sorry, N2, this winding, second winding, with N2 number of turns was open, and a voltage E2 was being produced. But now let's connect a load to the secondary winding, okay? So we are connecting a load here, and if you have a voltage and you connect a load impedance, then a current I2 would flow here, okay? <clears throat> but, but remember the, the very first thing we saw was that uh, the flux and voltage are, uh, you know, th that's the only relationship we have, that E1 is equal to N1 dM dt, right? It doesn't talk about any current here. That's Faraday's law. So if I2 is flowing, that means you have uh, additional ampere turns produced due to this I2 and that would cause the flux to change. But the flux cannot change because the flux is completely given by the integral of, uh, you know, uh, E1, like this here. So flux cannot change. So what, what has to happen is that uh, compensating ampere turns have to be produced by winding one uh, with N1 number of turns. So that's what causes this current I2 prime to flow when I2 is flowing here on the secondary side, such that N1 times I2 prime is equal to N2 I2. So the important thing to note is that in order for the flux not to be disturbed due to the flow of I2, uh, additional current is drawn from winding one uh, such that it nullifies the ampere turns on the secondary winding such that N1 I2 prime that is N2 times I2. <clears throat> so that is what's shown in this uh, equivalent circuit here. And uh, you can see here that I2 prime and I2 are related by the Stern's ratio from this equation here. And uh, if uh, we are dealing in a sinusoidal steady state, then we can represent them as phasors. And uh, the other thing to note is that the current, the total current that is drawn by the primary winding is the sum of this magnetizing current and this uh, additional current that is drawn due to the load on the secondary side. So this I1 is the sum of these two currents and we can represent them by phasors as shown over here. <coughs> All right. So, uh, you know, we have pretty much completed the main uh, principle of operation. 
The other thing we haven't talked about is uh, what happens when we have the resistances and the leakage inductances, which we will always have. But if you you know, remember what we covered in module one, that we can include the effect of leakage flux as an external inductance or reactance. Okay. Uh, so that is what's done. E2 is the voltage that is produced uh, due to this DFDT, uh, the magnetizing flux, but because of the leakage flux in winding two, which doesn't link winding one, uh, we have this drop across this uh, leakage reactance, XL2, X leakage two, and also across this resistance here. So what gets applied to the voltage at the terminals is not really E2, rather E2 minus the drop across this leakage uh, impedance. And similarly, uh, from the primary side here, if you apply V1 to this winding, then uh, you know we have to take into account the drop due to this leakage impedance of the primary winding here. So uh, we come up with this equivalent circuit for this real transformer, uh, where in the middle we have the ideal transformer with uh, N1 and N2 as the number of turns, but then uh, <coughs> we can represent the magnetizing uh, characteristic of this by this uh, reactance right here, and then we have included the effects of the leakage impedances. So that is the complete uh, quote-unquote equivalent circuit of this uh, transformer except for this uh, loss here, which we'll talk about in a second.